So this video is a follow-up to my video that shows you how to do long exposure photography on the GoPro action cameras. If you haven't seen that video yet, I've linked to it above. In that video, I show you how to get incredible long exposure photos on your GoPro using this $20 ND1000 filter from Freewell. Today's video can be viewed as a part two follow-up video to that, because in today's video, I'm going to show you how to edit those photos once you've captured them on your GoPro. In my long exposure photography video, I did mention that your photos are going to look really dark after you capture them. In fact, upon looking at those photos, you're probably going to think you didn't do something right because they'll look like this instead of this. But in today's video, I'm going to show you three different ways to edit those photos with just a couple clicks to get the greatest possible finished product. I'm going to run through three different methods for editing those long exposure photos from your GoPro. In the first method, I'm going to show you how to do this using the GoPro Quick App. The second method will be the Lightroom mobile app. And the third method will be Lightroom Classic on your computer. Let's get started. So the first method I'm gonna show you is how to do this on the Quick App on your mobile device. In today's example, I'll be using the iPhone 12 Pro, but the GoPro Quick App is compatible with a wide array of Android and iOS devices. So if you haven't already paired your GoPro to your phone, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do that in the Quick App. So I have already paired mine, so I'm going to power on my GoPro and I'm gonna open the Quick App here and I'm gonna show you how to do this. In my case, I have the Hero 10 Black. It's gonna say camera found. We're gonna click on view media. It's going to prompt to connect to the Wi-Fi network that it creates between the GoPro and my mobile device. I'm gonna click join. And then it's going to show us the media present on the micro SD card. The media it's going to load here are the sample photos that I took for my GoPro long exposure video. That way you can see the exact photos that I took and edited for that video. All right, so as you can see here initially on the app, those photos are quite dark. So what we wanna do when we find the photo we'd like to edit is you wanna select the photo here, and then you wanna click this download arrow in the lower left. It's going to download it to the device, and then you're going to click view media. All right, so this is the photo that we just downloaded. Now it is important to note that you cannot edit the raw photo in the GoPro app. You can only edit the JPEG photo. This option is great for you if you only want to do the JPEG photos and you don't want to do the RAW. If you want to do the RAW, then you'll want to edit it in Lightroom Mobile or Lightroom Classic on your computer. So for this, this is just the JPEG, but the JPEG is still incredible quality. You can still get really good results from this. So now that we've got the photo here, I'm going to show you quickly how easy it is to edit this photo. You're going to click on the edit button right down here in the lower left. And when you click on it, you're going to see these three options down here at the bottom. The first option we want to select is adjust. And here's where you're going to see how much data is actually preserved in this photo here. You want to click on auto as a starting point. Once you do the auto adjust, you immediately see a lot better lighting in the photo. You see a lot more details there as well that were previously way too dark to see. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to check the exposure and see if it's bright enough for you. So you're gonna click on exposure there. You can drag this left and right. Down here is basically what it started at. And when it auto-corrected, it went a little bit above the middle there. So I think it did a good job when it auto-corrected with the exposure. So I'm going to leave it approximately where it set it. Contrast, it bumped the contrast down a little. If you want to drag and see what results that gives you. I actually like this photo having it a little bit higher than the middle there. So I'm going to drag it up here to right around 10. Vibrance, I'm gonna leave alone for now. Temperature, I'm also going to leave alone. Shadows and highlights are where I recommend playing around with that a little bit as well. So oftentimes with long exposure photos, you can see this is adding the shadows back and brightening them a little. Generally, you're probably going to want to brighten those shadows a little bit. So I'm gonna drag this over here to about 15. Highlights is another key setting. So for highlights, in this case, I'm going to drag it a little bit left. I'm gonna leave it about negative 25. And then we're gonna click the check mark right here. And if you wanna use some filters, you can do that. Uh, GoPro has a couple different filters here. Uh, in this case, that filter right there looks pretty nice with this. But it's up to you. 
Uh, that one looks pretty cool as well. So, you know, you can play around with these filters if you've got a certain vision in mind that you would like to see there. You can definitely go through these. But for now, I'm not going to select any filters. I'm going to leave it as we edited it. And you also can frame the photo. So if you do have any fisheye distortion, you can correct it here. You can crop it. You can do this. In this case, that photo is very level and it was shot with the linear lens, so no issues there. And you can adjust it to 16 by nine if you want, or four by three. It really depends on how you want to display it. You can do one by one if you want to put it on Instagram or one of those formats like that. So you've got a lot of manual control over it. I'm going to leave it the four by three and I'm going to click the check mark and I'm going to click save. So that's how you edit a long exposure photo in the GoPro Quick app. Next, I'm going to show you how to do it in the Lightroom mobile app. So in order to edit the .gpr photo on your phone, there's a little bit of a trick to access that from your GoPro. So in order to view those photos, go to your browser on your mobile device, and you need to type in 10.5.5.9 forward slash videos forward slash DCIM. And when you do that, it's going to load this page right here. Basically, this is showing you your micro SD card in your browser. It's of course not a pretty interface to look at, but what you have to do is you wanna click here where it says 100 GoPro. And then it's going to show you the entire index of the files on your micro SD card. Now, if you've got a lot of contents in your card, you could have a folder that's 101 GoPro or 102 or even higher. In my case, all I have in here are the photos that I did that day, so it's really easy to go through and find what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these .gpr photos. And what I'm gonna select is I'm gonna select the 5510.gpr right here. And we're going to download this to our iOS device. So there it is, it's downloaded. And what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna go to your downloads folder for your browser. Now, in most cases, if you're on iOS, it's going to usually be Safari by default. And if you're on Android, it's usually going to be Chrome by default. In my case, I'm running the Brave browser on my iOS device. So I'm gonna click there. I'm gonna click on downloads. And right here is the file in that folder. It's called GOPR5510. I'm gonna click on that and it's going to import it. So I'm gonna click up here and there's the photo right there. So this is the actual raw photo, and we're going to be editing this on a mobile device. So the first step we wanna take is we wanna click this auto button right down here. And the auto feature in Lightroom Mobile does a phenomenal job. And here you can really see the benefit of taking that raw photo. One of the biggest benefits is if you look at the sky up there, the sky has the details of the clouds in it, but on the JPEG photo, it was washed out white. Even when we brought the highlights way down, the detail was gone. It was not available there. The raw file stores a lot more detail that you can really bring out when you're editing later on. So the auto already did a phenomenal job there. But what I would like to do is I'd like to go through some of these other options, such as the light, and I'd like to bring up the exposure a little bit more. As you can see, when we do that, we lose a little bit of detail initially in the sky, but we can bring that back with the highlights and the shadows. So the contrast, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit as well. Not too much, but just a little. The highlights, we're gonna bring those down more. See when I do that, how the details in the sky come out? So like right here near the center, the sky is way washed out. But when we bring this down, you can really see the clouds. And I think it makes the motion of the water look better and a little more pronounced. So we're gonna bring highlights way down. And with shadows, the default that it did when I auto-corrected, it brought them up to 61. You can play around with that and see what you like. I think that 61 is actually pretty good there. I may go a little bit higher to 67. The whites it brought up to 27. Generally with water, I like to bring up the whites a little bit more. I think that looks great right there. The blacks it brought down to negative 18. If you want a little more contrast, you can kind of bring that down a little further. So I'm gonna bring that down to about negative 29. And then color, I'm generally gonna leave the temperature and the tint alone. 
But saturation, sometimes it's nice to bring that out a little bit further if you really want some of those colors to pop. I kind of like that right there. So I'm gonna leave that at plus 24. Of course, there are a lot of effects you could use on here too. You can bring up the texture a little. I wouldn't go overboard with the texture, but sometimes bringing it up a little bit's nice. Clarity, same thing. A Little bit of clarity. Dehaze. Generally with dehaze, you don't wanna go negative, but if you wanna go a little bit positive, that can be kind of neat. And then the rest of these settings, I generally leave alone. I generally do not change anything on those. Detail, you can do your sharpening, your radius, your detail, your masking, your noise reduction if you've got noise in the photo. This photo doesn't really have noise in it, so I'm gonna leave it alone right there. You can do color noise reduction. The Lightroom mobile app, you can do a lot of different adjustments in there, so I really like it. The optics, you can remove any chromatic aberration. Generally a good idea to select that. You can also do lens correction, so the nice thing is Lightroom Mobile, it knows what this photo was taken on. So if you click that, it's going to straighten it. Now in this case, I actually don't like the default of that. It makes things look really stretched on the sides. But if you decide to do that, the key is to go to the next page where it's geometry. And what you can do is you can change the distortion here. What you wanna do is you wanna minimize that distortion a bit. I generally recommend with a GoPro, if you shot it in wide angle like I did, I generally recommend going down to like that negative 35 to negative 40. It's gonna make things look pretty good again, and it's going to be straight. You can of course adjust a whole bunch of other things here, the X offset, the Y offset, the scale, the aspect, but I like that right there, so I'm going to leave it there. I like the photo as it is right now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this arrow up here, and I'm going to click Export to Camera Roll. And in this case, it's going to export it as a .jpeg file. And that's good because the .jpeg is going to be really easy to share wherever you wanna share it. So that's how you edit it on Lightroom Mobile. Now the third option I'm going to show you is how to edit it on Lightroom on the computer. And once that opens, we're going to import the photo that we would like to edit. So we're gonna go up here to File, Import Photos and Video and we're going to go to desktop because I've already put the folder here that has these files in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import all of these. These are all just the raw photos, all the .gpr, which I highly recommend editing. If you did the raw photos in Lightroom, you're gonna get really good results if you did. We're gonna click import. It's going to import them all. And I'm going to select one of the photos that's similar to the one we edited on the phone. So I'm gonna select this one right here. As you can see, it is truly dark before it's been touched. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start off. We're gonna to go to the quick develop right here. We're gonna click auto. Now, when you click auto, you're gonna be amazed at the detail that this brings out that's preserved in that photo. Look at that. That is a night and day difference. Photo goes from very dark, basically not visible at all, to this right here. And that looks really good. I really like the long exposure effect here on the waterfall. I like it on the water here, especially down in this area. And I like the sky, that the sky's got those details. So we're gonna go to develop next and we're just gonna kind of fine tune this. And then that photo is ready to export. So we're gonna go here to exposure and I'm gonna bring it up just slightly more. I want it to be a little bit brighter. Highlights, I'm gonna bring those down. I'm gonna bring those down to negative 100. I actually like it with the detail in the sky. There were some thunderstorms moving in that day, which is pretty cool. Uh, too bad there wasn't like a lightning bolt that it captured over the waterfall, but can't have everything there. And then uh, the shadows, I'm gonna bump that up just a little bit, not too much. The whites, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit more as well, because that really makes that motion that's blurred there in the water really pop. So I really like that. For the saturation, I'm gonna bump that up a little bit as well. I want some of those greens and some of those other colors to kind of pop there too. And this photo looks a lot better than what we started with. We basically went from this to this. As you can see, that's a huge difference and it's super easy. 
really after clicking the auto, we had a usable result. I just fine tuned it a little bit further to my liking. But if you just want a simple way to edit most of these photos, if you click auto, Lightroom is generally going to correct most of the settings for you and give you a really good looking photo. So I'm just gonna right click here and I'm gonna go to export. And the photo's going to export. And I just wanna show you really quick what the photo started off as and what it looks like now. So the photo that we originally edited is this photo right here. I'm gonna open it in Photoshop to show you. So this is what the photo started off as right here. And then this is what our photo ended up as. So if I put this photo right here next to this photo, you can really see how much of a difference that made. And it's really neat because the ND1000 filter only allows one one thousandth of the ambient light into the GoPro sensor. So it's amazing that you can get this right here out of this right here. So that is how you edit GoPro long exposure photos using either the Quick app, the Lightroom mobile app, or the Lightroom Classic app on a computer. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful, and I hope you have a great time capturing some phenomenal long exposure photos on your GoPro action camera. Until we talk again, happy GoProing.